bright and breezy morning to you all. Welcome to the Flow Show. Hope you're doing well. well. Uh, morning, Kay. Morning, Ryan. Morning, everybody. Already with the popcorn, the suntan, and uh, sunglasses. And uh, 25 gallons of coffee. <laughs> all ready to uh, go for Madame Lagarde later on. Let's see what uh, wonders she pulls out of her hat. Uh, probably another brooch. Anyway, right, let's get through all the bits and bobs uh, before we get there. Um, China still fixing their rate below 720, 7.1874 last night. Um, they've also decided to ask some banks to hold off immediate dollar purchases in the interbank market to square off FX positions, according to sources. They want, hold, want banks to hold positions until and their net exposure hits certain levels. So this is if they sell dollars to customers or whatever, they, the PBOC don't want them getting out those positions, squaring those off in the market and buying dollars and uh, thus causing pressure on the one. Um, call it manipulation as much as you like. Um, but that's uh, what they want to do. We've also had, obviously, this adds to the story we had previously where they need permission if they want to trade $50 million or more um, from the PBOC before doing so. So China is feeling the heat about the one weakness, and now they're pulling out uh, all the stops uh, to do so. Um, and it's doing the job for now-ish. Um, we've stopped going up. I think <laughs> I think that's uh, as about as much of a win as they can class it at the moment, Kay. Well, I mean, it's... They're just trying to manipulate their their way out of uh, out of the weaker you want at least for now. Um, if you look at it, to <laughs> if you look at it, at the picture of what the dollar China does now, it's like you put a couple of lines on there, you watch it, but you don't do any technical analysis because that's got out of the window because they are just manipulating uh, in in any way that they that they can because at the same time. They um, they injected money again in the uh, in in the market. So they injected about uh, 110 billion uh, CNY, which is uh, what 15, 20, uh, yeah, 15, 15 somewhere billion dollars equivalent. So they are inje injecting money in the market, fixing the the dollar CNY low, defending the two percent um, band asking people not to buy too many dollars or at least not all. So that means that if a client comes and he buys like, I don't know, $250 you want for any good or so reason, you you, you have to wait until uh, until you lose money <laughs> before you can cover more. If, if that's, yeah. if, it, if it would go up a little bit and someone else getting paid as well. Um, and then, uh, and I read something else there, they gave city City China gets approval for um, qualified foreign investor clients to trade commodity futures. So at the same time, they are trying to open their market to re-attract investors. So it's a full steam ahead manipulation to uh, to control their market. Where is it going to end? I, I really don't know. Um, so what's, what's the options from here then? Because, you know, they're doing all this tinkering and, and telling people not to, you know, buy dollars and this and that. Surely the only next step they got is to go MOF uh, style intervention, haven't they? Well, I think they're, well, there is this thing. I, I don't think that they really want to, they want to get all the speculators out of this market. That's what they do. They are trying to force, and it might not be, or it, we, who knows with them, right? They can intervene and put it back at 715 uh, or at their fixing rate, for instance, whenever they like. and. <laughs> but I think they want to get the speculation out of the market, but it doesn't mean necessarily that they want dollar you want back below seven, for instance. Uh, and and um, because they know that they, they will have to export at one stage and if your currency is too strong, blah, blah, blah. Um, they just want to kill the whole speculative thing. And they could do it in a way just by keeping everything stable. Like for instance, if you look at the dollar Hong Kong, you've got one and a half percent to play in inside and that's it um they can they can hold this market for as long as in, in until the intervention sorry until the speculators say 
Right, we have enough of trading dollar China. Let's move on to something else. We 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 have to deploy our resources elsewhere, and then that that will probably be um, two thirds of the battle won. But that afterwards they can still let it go, you know. So I it's difficult to trade right now. But if you if you have your overall view, like for instance your, yourself, it, it's it's fine to trade against those prior highs to keep that that two percent band in mind uh, around the fixing and and you can you can bank on a few levels and then for people who would like to 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 trade the other side i reckon you have like a couple of levels there like for instance 725 which is not too far away that's less than half a percent right uh yeah. or you can or you can lean uh, uh go it a, a bit wider if you if you are a longer term player and say like okay i i can risk uh, um Two percent, like for instance, below seven fifteen or so, um, and and play it like that. But every technical analysis in between right now is is uh, is futile, right? I mean, it's it's yeah. just useless. Yeah, it's just you really can only use it just as a bit of a guide, really. Um, somewhere you know, like most technical analysis, just somewhere you want to balance your risk against uh, and something like that. I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, two minds about the speculation side of things, you know, because I think a lot of the move has been people trying to get out of China, you know, people in China getting money out, um, you know, putting it into dollars, parking it away. Maybe if there is a speculative side to it as well, um, I don't know, maybe they could hike up margins or start increasing costs for holding uh, short positions uh, as a way to squeeze them out rather than getting straight into the currency. But uh, like you say, you know, when they're injecting billions of yuan into it, they can't then start buying it all back in intervention. So it's a, it's a strange situation um, well, the, over there. The, 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 the big intervention that they will have to do, it, well, the, the big thing that they will have to do, uh, of course, they have reserves. They have plenty of reserves, $3 trillion equivalent or so. I mean, they, they, they don't really need to go and sell treasuries. But the, the, the big hint at saying, like, this is enough, and now the one is going to reverse would be if, if they openly go and say like we sell treasuries and we will use the proceeds of that to 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 sell dollar one, that is that is going to be um, major if they would uh, if they would uh, uh, any day do that. But I doubt that they will go that far to do it in an open way. You know that's and that's why I'm saying like pick your level and pick your poison. But I mean the the. Uh, as I said, I mean, if you're short dollar, dollar China, your your risk is clear. It's either the two percent band, but that can fluctuate a little bit because if they start to change their fixing is a little bit higher, that band will go a bit higher. Or you just observe the prior highs and 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 that's it. And if you're lucky to lucky enough to be short close to those highs, you 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 um you can manage it now. Um, but Again, in my my base idea is that over time it's still going to go higher. So um, I, I think if I see any move down to twenty five or twenty or so, um, I'm going to try the other side again and then yeah. decide where uh, where to, where to place it. But for the time being, I mean, it's like uh, when you invade something, you know, uh, any resistance is futile. So and and I and I guess we're in that scenario uh, right now where they really. Tell the market we have this under control. Don't uh, don't don't think we are going to let you uh, uh, get away with another one. Yeah, and it's uh, pretty much uh, the reason why I'm I'm happy to play on the short side for now because you know when they're clear they're clear. But uh, yeah, it's not out of the woods yet, um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, um, I, I, I have a quick question. Um, well, I, in, what happens in intervention? Boj buys. JPY and sells dollars and yeah, they don't they don't just go into dollars um, or sell dollars. Um, they can split it around the, the different uh, pairs. Um, as far as losing money goes, well, it's all a matter of context. You know, Kay can correct me, but they, they won't square up immediately after. Um, they can uh, give themselves some room because if they square up immediately after, they'll add to the move in the opposing direction. You know, they can suck it up for a bit. Um, you know what? What do they do in that situation? The they MOF wait the bank, goes their way. The, the MOF and the, and the and the Bank of Japan have no PNL. I mean, they, they don't declare we are losing or making money that that much or that much every day. I mean, 
this just goes into to to an account uh, and and it's like accountancy things they don't declare uh losses anytime and by the way if if you would um think that bank of japan is uh, is losing money think again because they have been buying so many dollars on, on the way down between uh even starting from 125 many many years ago, but all the way down to 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 in the in the 80s and the 70s, you know, um, they are long dollar yen at a pretty good average. If you if you would start to think about uh, the Bank of Japan's bottom line, um, no, the only thing is when when Bank of Japan intervenes is that they um, that they. Uh, um, you have to think about it in, in terms of uh, what do they have as reserves. And uh, so they have a lot of reserves. I think it's around, I give and take like a trillion dollars or so equivalent. Um, so they still have plenty of money, but they may say, we don't want um, to get below a certain threshold, like for instance, eight or 900 billion or so, in which case that they will have to do something which is likely to be um, sell a few treasuries, for instance, um, or, or, or something else that they have. But um, don't worry about them. Don't worry about the, the Bank of Japan. They, if they want, um, they have the ammunition to put dollar yen back down to 120. But they, they don't because they don't want to disrupt markets in, uh, in, in any way. They will only intervene if they think that the market is disrupting their market. And, and, and that's what we've been seeing. And if you look at it, for instance, they yes, they have been looking at uh, at, at that famous. Uh, well, the closest we have is the near right, but it's the trade weighted index which they produce themselves. And the MOF has been um, has been looking at that lightly um, <clears throat> last year, especially, and sending out warning signals when this uh, uh, trade weighted index goes back to the lows in yen. Um, so that. That is maybe what they're banking on, rather than a, a pure dollar yen rate, and the rest is speed. But um, to come back to your questions, they will never declare losses or, or PNL. I mean, imagine their PNL if they would have marked mark to market um, all their dollar holdings that they bought via interventions before. Um, they, they, they would have been looking at, a, at, at they would have possibly just intervened with the with the profits that they made from those interventions. You know. Um, uh, don't think about it in in terms of PNL for um, for a central bank, um, especially not guys like them. Um, do you think they're still long uh, on the interventions in 2011 when they, when they were buying it down there? Well, I mean, yeah, but the thing is, it's all accountant uh, uh, um, uh, accountant stuff, you know. They they keep their levels of of foreign exchange reserves at. Uh, now, they upped. They 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 really ramped them up, of course, during the big interventions. And and you talk about oh, two decades really of interventions um, from from the nineties uh, uh, until twenty twelve. You know, um, so will, will they have yeah. unused? It was a bit of a tongue in cheek that question. Possible, huh? It was a bit of a tongue in cheek question. Yeah, I mean, that, they, 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 will, they may likely have some because they ramped up the reserves, but um, they, and they will probably be looking at um, where their level of comfort is with, with uh, FX reserves, um, rather than actively uh, um, managing them uh, or, or, or looking at them really, on a, on a, especially not on a day-to-day -day basis. Those people are... They don't look at, uh, at, uh, at I mean, the, the, the best example is dollar yen when went up from 110, let's say, when, when the Fed changed their uh, changed their tag back in 2021 to 150, but they, they weren't intervening before 146, right? So, I mean, it's, they are not looking at this on a day-to-day -day basis. They're looking at it, who disrupts market and, and, and what is disrupting markets. So, um, yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much, mate. Um, right, moving on, but we'll stay in Japan. Uh, PM Kinshida has said he will ensure the end of deflation, uh, will carry out bold economic steps, including the gas subsidies, uh, will take policies to consistently achieve wage growth that exceeds the rate of inflation by several percentage points, uh, and will take steps to attract investment by private and public sector, sized at around 100. 
50 trillion yen uh, will compile a bold new economic package. Uh, so this is part of, uh, well, I don't know if you want to call it three arrows or five cannonballs, whatever you want to call it. Um, one question I, I did have, um, okay, it says we'll take steps to attract investment by the private and public sector sized around 150 trillion yen. Is that he's looking for people to invest that money or he's going to put packages in place to attract that inv well, investment? I mean, they, 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 they will have to issue bonds, right? That, that's how a government does. They, they, they issue bonds, right? So they, they are going to probably make it as attractive enough for uh, investors to come around. And then you talk about um, it's it's a little bit you know it's 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 still Japan right so yeah. they they probably that was likely directed more at um, investors between bracket like uh, like JPIF or um, um, the big insurers um, the big uh, um, trust banks and the asset the Japanese asset managers so. They're probably going to make it, and that is where those those JGB yields could could actually start to go up a little bit as well. Once that's in place, um, they're actually going to uh, to to make it attractive enough, I think, for them to uh, to get to the market. Now it depends whether they are going to go um, ten year and above, or if they're even going to go on on the short end, uh, shorter end of the curve, like the five seven years or so. They won't do anything. Uh, um, um, shorter. This it's likely going to be ten years and above, but they may make uh, the twenty and the thirty year very attractive, um, for instance. So um, I, I think it's rather directed at their own big uh, uh, mammoth in, in investors that that bit. Yeah. Now we, we were chewing this all over in in the in the chat room yesterday. Uh, what it all means and the the general consensus, I think. Is that you know these big policy plans and big budgets and injections and whatever they do um, is still yen negative, okay? Um, even though it's trying to promote inflation, foster growth, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, it is fiscal stimulus. It does need paying for, and that's going to keep the yen on the weak side um, and the Bank of Japan on the easing side as well, um, because they need to wait for these policies to come through. Um, to have an effect, and then hopefully the effect is such that they can get a better economy, get inflation up, come out of deflation, um, you know, and then the Bank of Japan can start tightening policy, getting things back to, well, I say a normal, um, a normal as in what the rest of the world sees as normal. Yeah, um, so there's a lot of water to go under the bridge. So don't expect these plans to be uh, yen positive. Um, it's going to be a long time before we see it. Yeah. For the short term, it means we potentially stay as is, um, and, and we keep an eye on the data. Obviously, it's 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 of course speculation from our side what what's going to happen. Yeah, um, it, it, it's always speculation. But to me, what it what it looks like is that, and and okay, Ueda will probably either give me right, prove me right or wrong. But to me, what it's going to mean and and that's their aim the aim of the whole the whole thing is to get the economy more on track than it has been uh, so far because we've we've seen better numbers out of japan but then we've seen better numbers elsewhere as well japan is no there's no talk about any japanese exceptionalism but that's what they are trying now to 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 stamp into into their economy to get a better economy but to do in order to do this you have to go through let's say, um, some pain because they, they, they may even, or, or they are saying that they uh, might not do it, but that means that they are still looking at it, high taxes or so. They are going to water down the, the public finances if, if, you, if you inject a lot of money or, or if you spend a lot of money to do that. Um, so it's going to probably, what my base case is, it's going to be in two waves. First of all, the first wave, the actual wave is going to be, it's going to weaken the yen because of those watered down finances. You inject a lot of, a lot of money uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the markets. Um, and my view is that that goes along with the fact that Ueda is going to be very slow in normalizing because 
whatever uh, central banks may say about independence and, and all that crap, um, it's clear that since Abe came on um, that the, 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 the government, the MOF and the Bank of Japan are together taking care of the Japanese finances, they, they, there's no independence there, right? So, and I think it's, um, um, and I think Ueda is not too much different in that respect from Kuroda for a certain period. So I think it's going to come in two waves. You've got a wave of yen weakening because they are going to want to sponsor those expenses uh, from the Bank of Japan, or it, it will be the cooperation, like they say. And then in a second wave, or in a second leg, when if they if they succeed, and that's going the data will will tell us if they succeed, then that may be the reversal where the yen could strengthen for years. If they succeed in their plan, the yen could really strengthen for years, and then the Ueda can can once they they they, they sponsor the whole thing, when, once the government is uh, is funded, then you can have like all of a sudden a turnaround in the market, and um, I, I we, we we can hardly put numbers on it, but I wouldn't be surprised if the yen in in a second phase strengthens twenty or thirty percent. It it could be. Yeah. Possible. Yeah, but I think that you know, look, if you try and judge how to trade it, you know, this Japan isn't like any other country. If other countries put in stimulus measures and whatever, you expect a, a fairly quick reaction. You know, six months, a year, something like that. It doesn't sound quick, but when you're talking Japan, that six months a year is probably five years in Japan. So you know, you can't sit here now and say, yeah, these plans are going to work. Yen's going to strengthen in five years' time. We don't know what, what the rest of the currencies are going to do in that time. Uh, dollar yen could be at, at 70 again because the dollar's collapsed because something's happened there. Um, you know, it could be at 200 because of, of what's going on. So it's it's very hard to pick a trend in the yen because the timelines are so much more stretched um, than anywhere else. But what we can do is watch uh, for those moments where there's big news coming in or changes to the central bank uh, and look to trade those potential trends because they may be good for five six seven a thousand pips if they're strong trends um but the long-term game you know it's it's still going to be uh, a bit muddy um, and unclear how to trade that exactly but anyway that's uh, that's for five years down the line we'll, we'll come yeah, back to the likely. show in five years time <laughs> you, you, yeah you, you you can't put a date on it right you, you can't put a, a timeline on it it's so yeah. difficult because no. also it's japan and, and there was this funny line, you remember, um, um, it was um, Ueda when, when he was in, uh, in, in the hole, right? Did he, did he say it when, it when he was in Jackson Hole? He said that the lag of, of, of Japanese monetary policy is rather 25 years instead of uh, 18 months or two years. And yeah. I, I, I think it was around Jackson Hole or so. Just, just let um, run th running through there a couple of those comments. Um, Arif. Um, great for Japs, weak, uh, weak currency, they are expert driven, uh, great for their balance sheet. Okay, um, I just want to say something that the, the balance of um, Japanese needs has very much shifted since the big earthquake, right? Yes, they are still exporting uh, and, and they're exporting uh, more and more uh, um, um, big machinery and, and some services and stuff. But don't, don't forget that they closed down a lot of their nuclear plants after Fukushima, okay? So they have become actually an import, a net importer uh, um, country of, uh, of, of energy and stuff, which has actually um, put, put an imbalance on their, uh, on, on their um, uh, balance sheet of current accounts, which is now starting to, to reverse again, okay? So, um, but we have to be a bit uh, careful with taking those old um, those old truths to um, to look at a currency, okay? And also don't forget that, for instance, the big uh, the big four car makers they have plants all over the globe. So the the, the thing is exporting themselves out of um, economic dips is is less true than it uh, than it was uh, than it was uh, before. And then your next comment about the Plaza Accord that was to devalue the dollar, right? The, the, in in the, that was when the dollar. Was uh, was racing away uh, back in 1985. That was uh, not really. Oh well, the rest of the of the um, the, the the countries were um, 
were crying, but uh, but that was to devalue the dollar in uh, in 1985. Um, if you look at uh, um, the other way around, and that that was the Louvre Accord uh, a few years later, where uh, central banks intervened to to buy dollars. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, it's good. We're getting a lot of questions uh, in the chat today, so we'll, we'll go through those. Um, what I'll do then, I'll skip over some of the lines that uh, really aren't that important in the grand scheme of things. Uh, we'll just uh, tick over a couple of bits of data. Um, we had jobs from Australia uh, overnight, uh, a good reading there. Uh, employment change up 65K, uh, beating the 23K expected. Uh, unemployment rate stayed unchanged. Um, despite the participation rate uh, going up as well. So that's uh, good numbers there all round. Um, bit of softness coming into uh, Japan's machine orders, um, showing negative numbers there. Um, plays sort of into the manufacturing slump we're seeing globally, um, but uh, another sign uh, that that side of things isn't doing well. Uh, industrial production as well there from Japan, uh, softer numbers as well, though not as soft as expected. Um, yesterday's US CPI, we'll have a quick look at pretty much on the money. The core came down to where everyone was expecting it to, 4.3%. Um, headline went up. There were expectations were a mix between 3.6 and 3.7. So we call that coming in as expected and confirming the jump there. The market initially in the seconds of the release popped on that higher beat in the headline uh, but then i think the the core number took over uh, and then we saw you know the dollar pulling back after that for the fed i think it depends um they can hide behind that core number um and remain neutral if you like uh, walking both sides of the line or they could be a little bit hawkish on the headline number and reiterating that the job's not yet done on inflation. Um, I don't think this data changes anything of the thinking really um, getting into the Fed, um, although I still believe the market is underestimating um, a hike possibility or hawkish possibility next week, but we shall wait and see. Um, that's it on those headline fronts there. Uh, we've still got the uh, strikes going on in the US, uh, automakers, all the bum fight going on over there. Uh, well, well, we'll leave that for now and let's get through uh, some of your questions and look at a couple of charts. Um, right, just going back. Um, Ali, you're in cable. Um, you got your big fingers wrong, mate. If you're short at uh, 128.91, you've had a brilliant trade, mate. Uh, I'm going to assume that's 124.91. Um, yeah, as we can see, cables bumping up into that 125s, not liking it and coming back down. So what uh, the battleground, the bigger battleground is 124 and a half and this 124.50, uh, which we've had a couple of cracks in the egg. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see uh, what happens uh, with this one. Probably maybe not too much happens over the ECB on this one, um, unless there's some drivers in the dollar. We might find this one going a bit sideways until uh, the Bank of England uh, next week, um, obviously on the pound side. Um, so you're looking to take profit at, oh, scrolled, where's it gone? Uh, take profit at 61. Yeah, that looks uh, fair enough. Um, yeah, 61, you're in a, while you're leaning against this uh, big figure, 125s, that trade is looking good, my friend. Um, Arif, looking at gold, let's take a quick butchers of gold. I, I, I'm keeping half an eye on this one. My main level down below is that 1885, 1890 area. Let's go into that one there. Oh, there we go. So we've got this fib from 94, uh, which has been a, a previous level on its own, but that uh, 1885 um, is the main level. Um, we have been holding this uh, 30s area, which I was talking about uh, when you were in your trade uh, the other day, I think it was. Um, but that's the uh, resistance line to take care of up there. We're not breaking through that. So we potentially we've got a chance down here. Um, you know, you've reduced your position. Uh, geopolitical situation wars. Can we rely on the data being accurate? It's all political. Um, you just got to trade, trade the price then. If you're not sure about the drivers, trade the price. 
um, trade the levels. Um, if you're short, you know, doesn't matter, wars, data, whatever. If you get down to uh, 1885, you've got a decision to make. Do you get out all your trade uh, in case it doesn't go any further? Uh, or do you hold it and try and make, uh, see if it breaks and run it further? Um, so it doesn't matter what the drivers are, what the reasons behind it are. Um, you can only trade the levels at the end of the day. So good luck with that, mate. I hope you get your position in. Um, Ali, uh, I, I'll leave that question on the, who are the big players yeah. uh, and whatnot. We'll maybe come back to that on another day. So remind us on that. Mm. Uh, yeah, that can that, you have anything to add there? That may be enough for uh, for a whole uh, flow show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Starting to talk um, about who the players are in the market. Yeah. Sorry. Starting to talk about all of that is like then you have to talk about what those people, who's doing what, and that's going to take a lot of time. Um, maybe you can come into the in, into our room and uh, and ask those kind of questions where we will have a bit of time to <laughs> to reply or uh, yeah or uh, ask for some coaching. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And just Angela. Um, hi, Angela. You, you, you're long UK 100. Angela, where, where are you uh, based, if I may ask? Perhaps we asked that already. Uh, and, and what's the reason for you being long uh, FTSE 100? It, it, looks, it looks quite all right, I must say, uh, although I don't trade it. Uh, oh, you're, uh, you're based in the uh, in UK. Great. Um, what's, what's your reason, then, for being long um, FTSE 100 then um, it, it looks quite alright but okay let's let's move on while Angela is uh, perhaps uh, uh, replying because it's already 11 o'clock and if we continue to go on we, we are going to babble into the ECB yeah exactly yeah we'll have a look at that Angela in a moment um, but I was going to move back uh, to Ali asking about the ECB um, that's obviously the, the big one today um, so just to give you my, I'll give you the plan I'm looking at today, okay? Because you know, there's there's always a hundred different scenarios that could pop up. Um, I I look through them. I think you know what what is potentially the most likely. Well, the first thing, the easiest thing to play on this one is this 107 level, okay? It's been solid since we've been down here. We couldn't break it. We've come through data. We've come through um, you know other comments, uh, data from the US, data from the eurozone speakers you name it we've come through it we can't break it okay so this is your probably your, your true guide for what is going to happen today okay we might mess around over the announcement over the press conference go up and down it whatever it wants to do where we finish the press conference is going to be important if we finish the press conference above 107 then likely we see this reaffirming again as support depending on you know what's happened here and that's going to give you a bias because if it can't go down after everything that's gone on, there's only one other way it can go. So this is your this is your pivot line, if you like, for the whole of today. If we're above it, then you've got some conviction to be in longs. Um, and likely we're going to be moving above these highs because if the market can't push it down, it's going to give up. On the other side, if we're below 106, by the time the press conference finishes, and we start to see 107, 106, 90 holding as resistance, we know there's a great chance that we're going to see further downside, and that is your resistance line thereafter. Um, so if you want to keep it simple, just stick to that one line, 107s, okay? Where we are at the end of it, at the end of the ECB, is potentially a guide. Obviously, that's not set in stone. We could end up doing a waffly thing where we're up and down over it and then what I've just said is complete bullshit, but I'm taking it. It's a big level. It's a big number. When you're trading, you've got a simple choice to make. Buy it above, sell it below um, in this instance. So that's that's the easy route. As far as the ECB goes, I'm looking at two scenarios. They either hike today and potentially signal they're done um, or back on pause, and that pause may be for a greater length of time or whatever. In that case, we're going to probably get a reactionary pop on the announcement and then that sells off um, during the press up if they indicate, you know, they're on pause after that hike. That'll mean we pop and then probably sell off. On the other side, if they hold rates now, we're going to see the euro probably falling because the market has built up its expectations over the last week or so that they're going to hike. 
Um, so if they don't hike, the market will be disappointed. We'll probably see a dip on that. If that is the case, I'm expecting the guard to then be hawkish in the presser because you won't want to give the market a chance to undo a lot of the tightening they've done by getting all dovish. They will still be worried about inflation. Uh, we, we've had heard rumour about the inflation forecast going up and whatnot. So this is, again, like the BOC, what's important? Is it inflation or is it growth? Um, and if it's inflation, then they're going to bang that drum and say, right, we've held today, but a hike is still in the pipeline. So on that, we'll probably see a dip on the announcement and then probably bid up over the presser when she comes out uh, hawkish on that side. So those are the two scenarios I'm looking at. Of course, there's others. She could be super hawkish uh, and say, we're hiking today, more hikes in the pipe. Or they could be super dovish, non-committal. Uh, we're pausing. We're worried about growth. Um, another hike is, you know, 50-50, that sort of thing. That'll be dovish, and you'll see the, the euro dumping. Whatever you plan you have, pick your, your scenarios that you want to trade. If the boxes get ticked, you trade. If they don't get ticked, maybe you sit on your hands and look for the next trade. But the simple way to do it is just look at that 107. We're either going to be above or we're going to be below. Um, and that's what I'm going to be looking at uh, today. Kate, what are your uh, scenarios? I know you're, you're pretty similar. It's, <laughs> it's hard to always to always cover every base, isn't it? But you've got to yeah, yeah, pick your, yeah. your most likely ones to trade, really, haven't you? Mm. All right, first of all, I'm, I'm going to start with DK, who made me really laugh this morning <laughs> when you said, like, you, you've been talking about those uh, ticking those boxes in uh, in uh, in our uh, general room, and uh, DK said usually my boxes get ticked after H trade. <laughs> I found it so funny. It was such a such a great uh, a great comment uh, at the time. Yeah, I'll put it up. I'll put it up there. There you go. That, that was my uh, that was my <laughs> message, my little ECB, so uh, you know, ideas, and then uh, that was DK there. Um, <laughs> he yeah, ticks his yeah. boxes after the trade. <laughs> very good, mate. Very good. Yeah, that was a really good one. Um, well, what are, what are we saying? I think you know, um, if you look at prices, regardless what the comments are, if you look at prices, I think you hit the nail there with the 107. That's the one, and the, the other side is the 108. And, and I think it's that's that's if. The euro closes above 108 today. It's it's uh, it's probably a sign that the market either has been um, a bit too bearish for the euro, or that Lagarde gave us something to chew on for the other side. Um, and unfortunately, uh, and and the more I thought about it, the, the the more I came up with different scenarios. So that 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 was a bit. Stupid from my side. I should not even think about the scenarios that Lagarde could give us. But there is a case, uh, an outside, I, I agree, but there is a case for a hawkish hike today. Um, and, and I yeah. did not really think about it too much before. And um, the, <clears throat> the clincher for a hawkish hike, in my opinion, will be QT. Um, and when they start to talk about the PEP, the APP, and, uh, and all that stuff, and if they say we are going to increase the role of, 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 the, of the balance sheet, um, that, that may be the kicker for if they hike and they talk about QT, um, that may be all of a sudden a hawkish hike, which up to now, it's not my, it's not my base case scenario by, by any means. I think the, the, the two main ones are are still like uh, um, a dovish hike where they go, uh, we do 25, signal the end, the, the possible end, they will never say like we are done, um, but they could signal uh, we are uh, where we thought we, we, we should be. And they worry about um, growth because uh, especially in Germany, which is one of the big engines of the Eurozone, um, there, there's been some really, really, really weak data of late. So that is the, the your your um, hockey, your dovish hike. Sorry, in which case we could see the algo jump um, and and the euro doesn't make it or goes to close to but doesn't make it or hold over 108. And then there's your hawkish hold, um, which um, 
I think part one, Ryan is right. We we probably on a hold go below 107 and then wait for Lagarde back uh, around 107 or so. And, and she could then be hawkish and then come up again with QT and saying like we're not done and, uh, and yada yada. But it was a very close call uh, for a hike. I, I think then we're going to see a rally, but perhaps at the end of the day, we are going to end up just where we are now. Um, or in my personal opinion, if they hold, the euro will in any case um, close weaker because um, the market will not have had the, what, what they priced over the past 24, 48 hours. And, uh, and, and that, needs, that will need to be priced in. Will it fall out of bed? Unlikely. Will we get closer to the to that prior low around the, the 106.35, uh, is it? Um, I, that's a fair possibility. So there I diverge a little bit of, of the opinion of uh, um, Ryan's opinion. I, I do think that if, uh, if they hold, it is going to ha have as a result that the euro will probably in the day a, a bit lower. And then we talk about the 107. So that's that's the level is the level. That, that is true. What we need to say, though, is that the options are, again, not pricing an awful lot of um, volatility. So the, the, the overnight at the money straddle, which is when you buy and uh, buy or sell, um, a put in a call at the same time at the same level is uh, priced at 60, 60 pips today, which is um, not a lot. It's a little more than, than, than over past events, um, but it's still not a lot. So that means that the option market is still pretty relaxed with the uh, with the the uh, event of the day um, and we have to note that uh, barring a 10 pips here there we go if you can put the overnight up in uh, in uh, in the euro dollar so you see the at the money there 107.28 um, and you see 20 30 pips for the downside 32 pips for the top side so at at the money where we are um, that that is what the option market expects that uh, that is going to be. It doesn't mean that the option market expects the 107 or 1760 to be the range. It does price in 60 pips of moves around um, the level. That that's how we should understand it. Okay, not like strictly. And over the past events, the option markets have been sort of right. So uh, I'm I'm just throwing that into the mix as well. Um, for people who would start to expect uh, gigantic moves, it's not what the option market is pricing right now, and they have been sort of on the money uh, of late. So that's a bit uh, my view on it. Um, it's it's going to be 107 or 108, right, uh, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, uh, Ali, you, oh, well, you've hold. Got the I mean, hold above or or, or hold yeah. below. That's it. If if we if we close at 107.30 uh, today. Then you're just waiting for next week because I think it's going to be very rangy. Yeah, and uh, Ali, you're, you're talking about skyrockets again. Um, I think again, you got to bring your expectations down. I'm not expecting, you know, two, three hundred pit moves out of this. Um, yeah, I'm expecting some volatility. We've got that volatility today because of the market having those increased rate expectations since last week. Um, you know, if we didn't have those expectations, then we're probably looking at a bore fest unless they were unless they hiked. Uh, a hike would have been the shock today. Now a hold is potentially the shock today. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, we go from here into the, the Fed next week. So, the, you know, the market isn't going to get too far out. It's pram it isn't going to go rocketing anywhere significantly unless there's some big, big news from the ECB. Um, because we're going to be slammed into the Fed next week. Um, so the market won't want to get overly positioned, you know, one-sided uh, with that big risk event coming. Um, but this is why this I've been saying this month is important. This month is important for finding out exactly what is important for central banks, for the BOC, for the ECB, for the Fed. Is it growth? Is it inflation? Because once we know the answer to that, we know how to trade it. We know growth might falter but if inflation's holding up central banks gonna act on the inflation not the growth um so that's why it's important once we come over the this week and next week we should hopefully have a clear idea and then hopefully i'll have a clear idea which way i want to maybe try playing the, the rate cut play into the end of the year um and positioning for who's going to be uh, the best of the bunch out of that um and on on the face of it right now that's likely to be the dollar 
So yeah, don't expect rockets. Expect some volatility. Um, but you know, you can base your trades, as we've said, on 107. Um, and if you get 108s, if you get 109s and you're long, great. If you only get 107 and a half, well, you'll have to take it um, if that's all the market's going to offer you. So that's all uh, you can do. Um, let's have a quick look at the FTSE. Let's see what Angela's up to, jobbing away down there in sunny Guildford. Not too far from uh, us, actually, Kay, Guildford, on the, uh, the M3 and just over a bit. Where yeah, it's one, of the, it's one of our stops on the train, right? Uh, when we go from uh, our neck of the woods to uh, to London. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit over the other side. Um, we stop it. when the trains are screwed and they send us yeah. around uh, the Haven't line. Then we oh. stop at Guildford. Um, but Woking uh, is there or thereabouts. Uh, anyway, enough of the geography lesson. Um, I've forgotten what she's doing now. <laughs> uh, oh, I've lost it now. What was Angela? Ah, long the footsie. Long yeah, footsie trading there. a break apparently. Yeah, we got the just this move above uh, the big figure here, Angela. Uh, trigger on price. Okay, yeah, so it's looking uh, it's looking a bit rosy at the moment. Um, you got a bit of a. I could probably draw it on that might make it clearer. Bit of a downtrend to. Uh, be concerned about. Let's see what that looks like. Give or take. Ooh. Oh, look at that. So you got me all in there. You missed the top. I missed the top. Ooh. I hate when I've got the poxy thing on. Oh, bloody hell. See what you've done, Angela? You've got me in a mess now. I've got me in a pickle. Right. It's not perfect science, but you get the drift. Um, you got a bit of a downtrend going on at the moment. Uh, Got that support along the bottoms around the 72s. You, I assume you're just jobbing it, so you're going to be interested in uh, around that line there, which comes against that prior top early August, uh, give or take around 76, 76, 15. Um, yeah, it's looking all right. It looks like you've got a bit of a break here of the minor resistance over the last couple of days. So, uh, yeah, nice grab. I hope you make many ticks out of that one and I uh, hope it continues as high as it wants to go, all the way up to uh, 8,000. I hope that happens. Or if you're in Highgate, London, yep, yeah, I know Highgate. I'm a Londoner myself. Right. Uh, Kay, you got any other bits of magic you want to show us for um, ECB? I'm Even going to keep it. Yeah, let's, let's just look at ECB stuff, okay? And so um, I'm just going to, um, and I'm not going to take too much time because I'm uh, I'm, I'm looking at the clock. Um, do, you, do you want me to limit you to two pairs? <laughs> uh, yeah, otherwise I can, as, as I said, I can talk in two uh, face and uh, and ECB <laughs> if, uh, if you let me uh, off the leash. Now, I mean, you know, I'm looking at this and uh, this is going to be a decider. M maybe not even today, but uh, we may have to wait for a, uh, FOMC really to decide on what the short-term differentials are going to do. But as I've said, this is your guide often for what's happening in euro dollar because it is the differentials between the euro and the, and the US short-term. Don't try to chart this, okay? It's not an inverted uh, head and shoulder that it doesn't work in that way in, uh, in, uh, in yields. It can become one if you, uh, if you look at it that way, but uh, I've never seen um, yields really following uh, too much of a pattern because the bond market is deciding on uh, on stuff. Um, but anyway, um, for today, your your tightest range here that you should be watching is minus 175 ish pp's to minus uh, 190 195 pp's the differentials. So this is um, if it goes up, the differentials are diminishing. So that's usually positive for the euro. If it goes down. The differentials are increasing, and that's usually negative for the euro dollar. And if you overlay the euro dollar from the 112s down to uh, down to where we are now, and the stabilizing, you will see what I what I mean. Uh, it's not 100, percent but it's uh, it's quite uh, a big uh, correlation. So, if ever we get like a really big surprise out of the ECB, I would start to look at those levels, 165 BPs minus, and uh, on the other side. Uh, call it 200 VPs, okay? If if we close the day anywhere outside those ranges, which I doubt, um, that would mean to me that we can be on for a fresh 
move in uh, in the euro dollar somewhere. If we continue to uh, to hover around in this range, then those option uh, market makers are going to be right again, and we're probably going to trade range. So keep an eye on where we go and where we hold after the press conference. Okay, guys, don't 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 look at this while while we are still trading <clears throat> the the actual statement. Don't. Um, I, I need to add that we have uh, U.S. retail sales and PPI as well at uh, at uh, this afternoon, so we could be in for a bit of saloon doors or double whammies on uh, on the euro dollar. So watch it carefully. Um, and then we're back. I think this is uh, if if this takes a direction, that's going to decide upon your 108 or your 107, um, really for the close of the day. Uh, and I would really like to keep the euro dollar as simple as that today, 107 or 108. Um, uh, if if we stay in between, it's likely going to just stay there um, and and range trade. There's one um, which has just been, a quick just a yeah. quick uh, one. K um, Horatio is asking why do you look at the two year diffs versus the ten year diffs? Because that's your day to day. Um, your day to day moves are more or less uh, directed by by these ones. That's the that's the closest one to your spot market, if if you want, because the two year is the closest one to immediate expectations for central banks. Um, for instance, and and that's I mean somewhere you you have to look at what the market what most in the market are looking at, right? If you look at the the the, the yen, for instance, the yen is really following the ten years. If you look at the cable, for instance, the market acceptance is that we more look at the five years and and. Don't ask me why. I'm not a bond trader, but I'm I'm just I'm just you know over time knowing what the market is looking at is 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 the more important. If you look at something else than the market is looking at, you're going to probably end up with more questions than 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 answers most of the time. Um, so that that is the thing, which is those two years are most the the, the closest ones that we can trade and the most correlated to the spot moves based on immediate um, ECB and um, Fed uh, expectations, right? So the, the other one, since it's ECB, is looking at those euro crosses. This one is, is been, uh, uh, has been going down, uh, down quite a bit. I, I just traded really short-term scalps on it. I didn't um, really have, I don't really have a more medium-term position, but for as long as oils remain bid, um, if gas remains bid as well, that's perhaps not too good for the Eurozone either because of the reserves and stuff like that. This, this is still looking pretty weak. Keep an eye on what's happening if the Euro would start to reverse. Keep an eye on what's happening here. 145, 75.90, that is going to be a pretty decent zone to, to, to monitor now, okay? If we get a, a, a hike, for instance, and, uh, and a bit of positive comments or hawkish comments, and we get into this zone and fail, that means that nothing will have changed and we're likely going to drift lower again, okay? If you go up here and we start to break, then the picture may actually be changing and then the may, something may be changing in the euro, okay? Um, the euro yen is a really difficult one to read for me right now. Um, it's bit, it's, it's undeniably bit, okay? We have to start to go below uh, 156.60 to really turn it around. In the meantime, uh, 157 and a half ish, and 158.60, uh, 75 there. That's going to be your uh, your range uh, to to start monitoring of the day. Um, you did you do the euro sterling already? Because I think that 86.20.30 is relatively interesting there. Uh, no, I didn't, but uh, I'm ringing. So there's the a quick one here, the quick view of the That's your last one. Huh? That's your last <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. So the uh, euro sterling, because the, the sterling is showing a bit of signs of of, of topping out or, or, or being a little weaker. Watch what's happening in the in the 8620 prior top 30 zone. If that would go over the ECB, then I think we are in for a move up to at least 8660s and perhaps even 87. Okay. If we start to, to break back below uh, 85, 70, 80, then, then meaning that the uh, ECP may be a bit dovish. And back over to you, Brian. Thank you very much, mate. Um, well, a big old session. And thank you for all the questions and uh, thoughts. I, I, 
it's much more interesting when we're answering your questions and going through stuff that's going through your mind rather than just uh, us waffling on uh, insistently. So thank you very much for that. And uh, as always, thank you for Kay and all your valued insight. Um, stay safe over the ECB. Watch the data as well, as Kay mentioned. Um, you know, you might see a move on the announcement and then that gets tipped around with the data. Might give you better levels, might give you worse. So uh, take that into account. Trade safe and we shall see what happens uh, with it all tomorrow. Thank you very much, everyone. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.